we all know that the statistics around youth employment, youth unemployment, are staggering. The youth make up 36% of the country's population, and yet well over 50% of people under the age of 24 are unemployed. Behind these statistics lies a human tragedy of immense proportions. There are, of course, the grim physical realities associated with unemployment and poverty, but there's also a profound psychological dimension. Basic to a person's self-respect and dignity is having a sense of independence. And this is also why it's so important to have a job. Freedom presupposes self-respect and dignity and in a free society, this is something to which everybody should be entitled. Not having a job is humiliating. Not having a decent prospect of getting a job is devastating, especially for young people. It destroys hope, the sense that there is something important to live for and that there's the possibility of a better future. To borrow a phrase coined by the great psychiatrist Viktor Frankl, it creates a feeling of futurelessness. As well as being a human tragedy, youth unemployment is a ticking time bomb. Desperate young people, unemployed and without skills, inevitably turn to violent crime to survive. It also creates fertile ground for populist politicians who feed off people's frustration and anger, making promises that may be enticing, but which are irresponsible and reckless, bound to cause long-term damage and destruction. In South Africa, this clearly threatens the conditions for success of the business community on of our country. It's a pragmatic issue as much as it's an ethical one. In the discussion about youth unemployment, the role of education is obviously crucial. Of all the many evils of apartheid, perhaps the worst was Bantu education, and we are still living with its terrible legacy. But almost 25 years since the end of apartheid, and despite heavy government spending, our education system is still failing many of our young people, denying them the opportunities to successfully develop themselves and get decent jobs. And this too is incompatible with a free and fair society because access to education is a precondition for access to opportunities. And this is a huge bearing on how wealth is accumulated, on how resources are distributed, and how power is exercised. The topic of tonight's discussion could therefore not be more urgent and more vital. It raises all kinds of thorny questions to do with attracting investment, the respective roles of government, business, and civil society in addressing our youth unemployment crisis, where their responsibilities begin, but also where they end what kind of education system we need, and what's being done and what could be done to achieve this, and how we can more effectively engage with young people in the conversations about our country's future. 